So first of all, my name is Aritz Medina. I'm a PhD student in computer science from the University of the Basque Country in Spain. And uh, my research group is called Tonekin. Today I'm going to present a tool that my supervisor Oscar Diaz and I have been working on, which uses web annotations for assignment marking. First of all, what it's mean by assignment, assignment marking? Assignment marking consists on setting or defining a marking rubric. Then the students complete and upload their assignments. The teacher marks all the assignments using the defined rubric. And finally, they publish their grades and the feedback comments to improve their learning. But currently, all the, all the activities can be done in a learning management software except marking assignments. Teachers need to download or print or whatever the assignments highlight to highlight their strengths and their mistakes and then translate those marks again to the learning management software. So our approach is just to translate this activity to, 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 the, to the web. So which ones are the inputs or the inflow dependencies to conduct this, acti this activity? The defined rubric and the uploaded assignments uh, that they need to be assessed. And which ones are the outflow dependencies? The students receive their grades, and also the teacher provides usually feedback comments in, or online or in class to help the students understand the, where the, their marks come from. So the inflow dependencies are students' assignments and the evaluation rubrics. Evaluation rubrics are composed by the criteria to be evaluated, mainly which ones are the competencies that are evaluated. For each criteria, which ones are the possible levels of completeness that the student has reached. And for each level, uh, they have a description describing when the student has reached this level. And the output, basically, is the selected level for each criteria and the associated comment for each criteria. But how are the, the assignments marked along the rubric? It's mainly composed by three sub-activities. The first one, the teacher usually highlights the evidences which corresponds to each criteria. For example, the mistakes found or the strengths or whatever. Second, they provide comments. And finally, they take into account all the evidences and all the comments, and they decide a mark. And how we can translate those activities to the web? We use web annotations to assess students' digital exams. So to this end, we have developed Mark and Go, that is a dedicated hypothesis client for rubric-based marking. We provide a color coding highlighter to highlight the different evidences for each criteria that it's as easy as select a portion of text or the, the thing that you want to, to highlight and uh, click on the criteria that pertains to that highlight. Then the teacher can add comments to the highlight, which will help students to know where, their where are their mistakes or what is the teacher referring to. But it is not only the, the only thing. Uh, comments should be personalized also for a student, otherwise it won't be valuable for them. So for that, we provide a direct link to previous assignments and the possibility also to attach the reference to the, re to the previous assignments to let the student know what is the teacher talking about. Usually also students uh, have the same mistakes, so it is possible also to reuse those previously created comments. Finally, the teacher must provide its final mark. For that, they can use the sidebar just to navigate through all the evidences in the, in the assignment. And finally, they decide the corresponding mark. Must to say that the highlighter is consumed from, in our implementation from Moodle. You can define the uh, rubric and it consumes from Moodle and automatically creates the, and configures every, everything to start uh, a student's marking. And the outflow, as we said before, is just to translate 
or write the marking activity to Moodle again. It automatically fills all the marks in Moodle and add uh, some the comments that they provide. But also we create a report in Moodle where we have a links to, to each of the annotations, to each of the evidences that the teacher has marked. So the main advantage of this idea is that the student can click on a link and they will be redirected to the exact point where the teacher has assessed its criteria. But as we're using also web annotations, they can reply also the teacher assessment online, asking for clarification, doubts, etc. And which ones are the benefits that we found translating this activity to the web? First of all, the first benefit is that the feedback is provided as fast as the teacher assessed. Providing feedback on time is especially important in large classrooms and in continuous assessment, and it's a, not an easy task. Uh, also, automatic translations uh, reduces the number of mistakes done by the teachers when they translate and publish a student's mark. Then the feedback can be also assessed online, so the students access to the assignment as, as soon as the assessment is done, but also they don't need to go to tutorials or even discuss their specific tasks in class. They can do it online, everything and they can take their time to find the extra information just to, to ask the questions to the teacher and answer. And the most important thing is that they can answer in the context of the activity in the assignment. And as the, and as the feedback are web annotations, students can trace their grades, look for the evidences highlighted by the teacher and how they uh, get the corresponding mark. And the last benefit, it is related with the assessment reuse. Uh, assignments are referenceable, so the teachers can reference previous activities to give more personalized feedback to the students. Comments are also re reusable, reducing the time required to, to provide the feedback. And also, annot annotations are reusable data sources. So we can consume those annotations to analyze the global performance of the classroom or one student's progress, but also it's possible to, to learn from previous assessments to automate or at least semi-automate assessments in further courses or in the future. But not everything are advantages. We have to face some challenges to develop Mark and Go that are related with our specific domain, but other ones are extrapolable to other domains. The first, of, the first one is that we found in Moodle implementation that there is no way to open a student's uh, files online. <laughs> Assignment files are online resources as they are hosted in, in Moodle, but due to security restrictions, Moodle automatically downloads those files to the computer. So what we have done is just to map the downloaded file, the, in this case, the unified resource name, for example, the document hash or, or a unique ID, and the Moodle uh, URLs. And have to mention that currently, also Hypothesis uh, use this approach for to annotate locally saved PDF documents and relate the local PDF and the web PDF. That it's the same, but in different instances. So we have uh, also extended this idea to support also plain text-like files. Then another challenge is more related with, us, with the domain of, a, of assignment marking. In this case, uh, the annotations must, must be limited to be only accessible by the student and the teacher. Otherwise, other students could be able to see their, their college marks. So our current implementation, our current approach is to automatically create private hypothesis groups for each student and teacher. It implies that the teacher will be enrolled in a lot of, <laughs> in a lot of groups, one for, each, one for each student. And we would like in the future to have an annotation access level permission. So they can be enrolled in the same group, but they won't share the marking related annotations. 
And the last one is more related to a legal issue, more than an implementation related one. In 2018, in Europe, becomes effective the General Data Protection Regulation, which regulates how the data is collected and stored. In our case, the data uh, was treated, uh, was collected and stored in hypothesis, and we treat it uh, as anonymous, or we need to 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 get the consent of the students at the university to be hosted in a in a third party server like like hypothesis. So currently, our implementation, what it does, uh, is basically anonymize all the data, the students' names, IDs, uh, emails, etc., never externalized from Moodle, and the marks and assignments need to be stored in Hypothesis. So for that, what we have done is just a one-way hash calculated based on, on the students, course, and assignment ID to create, populate, and consume those Hypothesis groups. And apart from that, another important aspect is that Mark and Go is a Chrome extension for Moodle, but there are plenty of uh, elements. For example, just to mention some of them, uh, Canvas, Blackboard Learn, or Google Classroom. And we can use Mark and Go as a mediator between the LMS and the annotations. And we think that one of the possibilities, as it is mentioned before, is just to use uh, learning tools interoperability framework, which is a framework to interoperate with those elements and external applications. As far as I know, Hypothesis already is using it for shared annotations and single sign-on, but nothing else. And to conclude, Mark and Google, it's fully available in the Chrome Store. We are using it to assess assignments as a pilot evaluation in, in some classes. And if someone is interested in it, feel free to ask about, uh, for a demo or whatever during this conference tomorrow, maybe on Friday too. And we are looking for external validators for this tool. So that's all. Thank you for your patience. And if you have questions. <laughs> Wow, that is some uh, fantastic new functionality that I haven't seen before. <laughs> Thank you, Aritz, that was great. Do we have questions? Come on, everybody's completely sapped. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody see anything there that they hadn't seen before in an annotation tool? I did. Automatically created private annotation groups between teachers and individual students, for instance. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's a kind of a hack, <laughs> right? I wonder, you have a question too? <clears throat> My question was about that, uh, about the functionality that you were looking for, and you described it as, um, I'm trying to remember the phrase that you the used. Yeah, annotation example. level permission or something annotation like that. Annotation level permissions. Yeah. Can you explain? I'm not sure I quite understood that because that could mean a couple different things. Um, if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, the idea is that currently uh, teachers uh, and students are in different groups. Just to reduce the number of groups, it could be a good idea just to avoid the access to some students, and it depends on which one is the student, uh, the annotations is fr from, where, from which student, just to decide if they can have access or not. Just to avoid the idea of one student looks, the other student marks and comments and whatever. I think that they, ma they have to be private, just for the student and the teacher their marks and their, their comments and their feedback. And that's, that's more or less the, the idea. Just to reduce the number of, of groups and the number of... I think that currently hypothesis in their, in their permission, you can, you can define the permission of annotation access just to read 
you can set if, if all the group can read, uh, everybody or just you. But it could be better just to, it could be good to have, uh, to, to define a list of the users of the group that can read those annotations. Follow up. One idea people have suggested it would is that in a if you create a group, say a private group, any member of that group can essentially DM mm. any other member of the group. No. So you could have as many one-to-one -one level mm -hmm. um, conversations as you want. They're all inside the group, mm -hmm. and then as the member and a member of that group, if you you can look through and you can see any conversation. So the teacher could have one-on-one -on -one conversations with anybody or any two students, you uh -huh. know, whatever. Would, would, that, would that address the thing? That yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think just to clarify, I would say, and you have it correct, that in the hypothesis world, um, access to an annotation is actually, unless you've marked an annotation as private to yourself, all annotation access is determined through the group that that annotation mm -hmm. is in. So the problem you're trying to solve would be better solved if there were a more granular permissions model that would allow you to no. not just rely on the group that the annotation is in. Does that sound correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, this is more of a comment than a question, although it's kind of a question for the hypothesis folks. Um, what was really interesting to me about what you presented was the, the mapping to the rubric, because I found myself, I was recently doing a peer review, and I found myself naturally trying to use hypothesis to keep track of where I wanted to, to tie in my notes mm. on, the, on the, what I was reviewing to the rubric that I needed to review against. And I'm, I know there are peer, that hypothesis has been used for peer review, and I'm kind of curious whether there are, whether you had looked into how hypothesis was used for peer review, and if, that, if those features of mapping to a rubric are there, or <coughs> if the hypothesis folks are planning to, to add rubric mapping into their peer review tools. I think most of the peer review that's been done in hypothesis has been open peer review. Uh, in the context then where all the annotations are publicly available or maybe available inside at least a, a private group to everybody who's participating. So it hasn't been extended to that level like a one-on-one -on -one kind of privacy level. Anybody else have anything to say about that? <laughs> it was more the rubric map. I mean, the one-on-one -on -one wasn't as interesting. The rubric mapping was really interesting. I, I think it would be interesting to to go through common rubrics and map the permission models that are implicit behind those, and then think about um, how we would take the permission model that we've got right now and evolve it, to be able to support those. Because um, we tend to think of things as just generally, as, as, um, um, as she said, you know, what, what are the, what is, what is the model and how can we expand the model? I think one context is that hypothesis is often used for post-publication peer review rather than kind of the, the peer publication. I think that offers a lot of opportunities because you don't have to worry about the fact that, um, you know, this isn't publicly available yet. So that's another way to think about it. You know, maybe... Uh, Pre-peer review comments can also become post-peer review extensions. Any other final thoughts or questions? Well, we have actually reached the end of the day, so another big hand for Haritz.